Coding languages like Java and Python don't live in a bubble, at least not really in the real world of development. As we're learning and as we're students, we often just kind of sit in our one environment. Maybe we just write in Python, just write in Java as we're learning the basics, as we get our skill sets built, as we learn how to create good programs, build good habits of coding, and all these great things that we're learning in this course. However, there comes a time where we want to branch out into the wider world of this tech development space and take a peek at some of the other opportunities that we have of things we can interact with using our coding languages. Because the reality is that in a lot of the development that happens and in a lot of jobs that are out there, you will not just be writing in a single language. You might be writing in multiple languages or maybe a core coding language and some scripting languages to support some side development. You could be, for example, branching out from Python or Java to interact with a game engine if you want to be in game development where you actually have to learn about how that engine manages all sorts of different types of data, inputs and outputs, and how these programs can communicate with the engine back and forth to get this product up and running. Or maybe you want to be able to connect to some database. Oh, I've got to learn how to type or to write. Spell is what I'm looking for. Man, my brain doesn't work while I'm thinking on the fly sometimes. A database where we need information to be stored and retrieved in complex ways. There's huge database systems out there like SQL, is a, probably the most popular biggest one right now, whose job it is is to make managing massive amounts of data and accessing all sorts of combinations of information to produce graphs and charts and process all of the a huge massive spectrum of different things. And Python and Java can both interface with these databases to be able to manage some of the logic, but the data itself is managed over here to make the overall complexity a lot more easy, a lot more convenient and transferable to other things. You could also think about actually being able to work with some of this code maybe in with some different types of dev strategies or dev platforms. A huge, that says platforms. Let me write that again. Platforms. What I'm thinking about here is things like machine learning, AI, where we have these different kind of platforms that are sometimes built on top of these languages or sometimes ancillary, and we work alongside of them to actually do some really high level manipulation of information, do some data modeling, and maybe produce some kind of automated artificial intelligence behavior that then can maybe report data back to our programs written in these languages and work in tandem with one another to solve really intricate, interesting problems in new design spaces. But probably the biggest and most relevant one for the number of jobs that will be available in the future and maybe your own personal interests potentially is something that we call the web stack. And the web stack is the internet and all the things that get it up and running and make sure that it runs properly and help developers and designers create content and manage all of the infrastructure, databases, and sites that are that all that make up the internet. And so the web stack, of course, can have code fed to it or managed through these languages, but can also report back information to these languages so that they interface and interact in different ways. And Something that hopefully is emerging from this diagram right now, which is a very simple short summary, by the way, is that there's a huge world of learning out, out beyond the walls of our classroom or the room you're stuck in watching these videos that are far beyond the time and ability for us to learn at this point in our studies. In a single high school, we don't have the ability to cover most of these topics. So I wanted to at least give us a little taste of at least one or two of these things and in this section, we're going to focus on this idea of connecting just in a very simple way with the web stack. And in particular, the HTML code that is the foundation of how websites are made. And what we're going to be doing is writing code in Python or Java that allows us to take a look at the HTML underlying any website that we want to visit 
we're going to learn a little bit about how to understand HTML, which is a lot simpler than these other languages, so that we know how to find the right things and we're gonna allow our coding languages to run some scripts or some logic that's gonna query these websites and dig and scrape through all of their data to extract information that we wanna pull into our program with the idea of making a bit of a web scraping bot. Something that's gonna be able to, in an automated way when we run it, go to all sorts of different web sources that we've pre-programmed, extract the data that we want, and then synthesize it together for us, maybe producing a report or giving us a bit of an analysis of things, letting us know and making our data gathering, our content consumption of the web a little bit more efficient because we can curate what we want our own web scraping bot to do for us so that we don't have to go to all those websites and scroll up and down because we've coded it right. It's going to be able to search for us, extract the data and present it to us in the way that we create. So I hope you enjoy this opportunity in this unit to experience one of these extra branches of this development stack by focusing directly on the web stack and specifically just a single simple subset, HTML, as we use our languages to pull data. And I hope that it sparks a bit of an interest in your mind for the types of courses you might be able to study in university or on your own time to learn a lot more about some of these other different areas as well. Enjoy.